Well, that was intense. The Yukon Huskies have officially placed their name into the Sweet 16 bracket for the 28th straight season, after holding on in a gritty, ugly contest against the UCF Knights, where defense was the main emphasis of the game. It was a brutal match to watch, but nonetheless a fun one, as UCF probably gave UConn their biggest second round test out of their last 28. So, what can we take out of this game for both sides? In today's video, I'll be breaking down the positives and negatives I saw from each team in today's game, and more specifically for UConn, what that means for them as they come up against Indiana in a few days time. Before we start, if you're new here and enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe. For more women's basketball content like this, I'd love to reach 2,000 subscribers on this channel, so all support would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, with that being said, let's talk about this crazy game. Firstly, let's talk about some of the positives for UConn. As though they were tested, they responded really well. UConn's defense was simply phenomenal in this match. They matched the defensive intensity and hustle being shown by the Knights, so even though they shot a poor 29% from the field, it didn't really matter all that much in the end. UConn's interior defense was especially great, anchored by Aaliyah Edwards in this game as she finished the match with multiple big defensive stops, including several charges drawn. Edwards' play on this end helped maintain UConn's momentum, and though ultimately she got into foul trouble, I think Edwards' defensive impact overall was still a major positive tonight. Same goes for Olivia Nelson Adoda, whose four big blocks pushed UCF into a more perimeter-based game. On that note, moving to the perimeter, Nika Mule and Paige Beckers were elite defensively. I tweeted this during the game, but I honestly have to say that outside of Paige Beckers, I think Nika Mule makes the most impact on this team. Her defensive instincts are incredible, she's got the lateral quickness to keep up with her defenders, and has a good reach to poke away loose balls or get blocks. Tonight, she played a big role in clamping up the primary option for UCF in Diamond Battles who finished the game shooting 3 for 11 from the field. It may not always show up in the stat sheet, but Nika Mule's hustle and energy whenever she steps on the court is so important for this team. Plain and simple, Mule is the heart and soul of this Husky squad, and her energy gives the squad a much needed boost at times when they're struggling to get going offensively, and that was as evident as ever in today's game. As for Paige Beckers, she was locked in defensively and made some big stops, most notably her block at the end of the first half. Her ability to read the opposition's offense is amazing as well though, which you can see here in this clip. Paige anticipates the drive on Aaliyah Edwards and steps over and away from her player to help out. When the drive does happen, she's able to rip the ball away and get out in the open court. And though she doesn't end up scoring, she's still taken away a possession from UCF. It's plays like this that make her a positive on this end. She's truly an extremely talented defender, and I think it often gets overlooked because of her offensive prowess. Overall, while UConn did get locked up themselves, they too shut down UCF's offense, making the Knights struggle to find good looks, particularly in those second and third quarters. UConn battled hard for this win, and their defense is easily the biggest reason why they came out on top. Another positive from tonight was the leadership from two players, Kristen Williams and Paige Beckers. Williams stepped up big time as a senior, not being afraid to attack and create off the dribble, and though she was inefficient, I really liked seeing her take the game on, staying patient even in such a big game. Her impact was definitely felt, so it was only right for her to close out the game with some clutch free throws. As for Beckers, I felt her leadership a lot more come from being a verbal leader. This clip is from the Mercer game, but I think it emphasizes how much Paige has developed into a verbal leader on the court this season. In a set play, Paige passes out top to Aaliyah Edwards. Edwards looks for Paige on the cut, but as Paige starts the cut, she notices that Kristen Williams is wide open on the wing due to a mixed up rotation from the Mercer defense. So she points over her shoulder as she makes eye contact with Edwards, letting her know about Williams freeing up so Edwards is able to make the right pass in this situation and give it to Kristen, who then delivers on the open jumper. It's just small things like that that show the growth in Becker's understanding of the game and her leadership overall on the court, 
and like her defense, I think this aspect gets overlooked a bit. Yes, she's still a bit rusty offensively right now, but she's making big plays in other areas of the court, and that deserves a lot of love. I would like to see Paige get more involved because of this. She just seems to do everything right when she has the ball, or even when she's just on the court. She has so much poise out there. So Yukon should really try to cut down the possessions where Paige doesn't touch the ball on the floor, which I do feel like happened a bit too much today. But I understand she's still returning from her major injury, and I do think that the 32 minutes she played tonight were great. But again, that's just something I hope to continue to see increase as the tournament progresses. Obviously though, there are a lot of negatives to take out of this game for UConn. There's a lot of areas where they can improve for sure. While I'll attribute a lot of the poor shooting and offense to UCF's defense, going 2 for 11 on layups is completely unacceptable. If UConn had hit at least 70% of these, they blow out UCF. It's as simple as that. UConn also missed a lot of open shots, some of them just not getting a lucky bounce, others a bit off the mark, but I think I'll attribute more of that to UCF's full court defense, making the Huskies rush their offense a bit. I think UConn also panicked a bit in the half court, which led to a lot of 8 second violation scares. The way they tried to push through the press in the first half really wasn't great, but players like Kristen Williams stepped up in the second half, so that was really just a first half frustration in my opinion. Overall though, there's a lot UConn can learn from this game, particularly on the offensive side of the floor, and I think this kind of frustrating game for their offense could be what kicks them into gear for the rest of the tournament, but we'll have to wait and see. Moving on to UCF now though, there are a ton of positives they can take away from tonight, and they should be very proud with how they handle themselves against such a deep and versatile UConn team. Their defense was simply fantastic forcing UConn to play at a quicker pace than what they like, which allowed the Knights to dominate that opening quarter. The coaching decisions made were really smart throughout the game in my eyes, and though their offense really struggled, the heart and intent on the defensive end really made up for it and kept them in the game. There were only two problems with UCF today that I felt may have cost them this match, one of them being their lack of intent to guard AZ Fudd. While she did miss her first couple of three-point attempts, she then went off for four threes on 40% shooting. But there didn't seem to be any adjustments made to really try prevent those three-point looks. UCF also failed to take advantage of mismatches inside so many times on their offensive trips. They'd get the switch they wanted and failed to get it where they needed to put it. You can attribute that to good on-ball defense from UConn, but I think a lack of awareness also contributed to this poor decision making from the Knights. I mean, it was pretty hard for opportunities to come by the whole game. So when these did come around, UCF needed to find them. Unfortunately, they rarely did. And it's a big reason why I feel like they couldn't complete the comeback today. Overall though, this was a very fun game to watch. And while there's a lot to think about, for both teams, there's also plenty of positives to take away, especially when it comes to the defense side of things. The Women's March Madness tournament appears to be as competitive as it's ever been, and that's really exciting to see. Anyone can win on any given day. The race for the championship is completely wide open right now. We'll have to see how UConn fare against Indiana now. Personally, I think UConn match up quite well, but I have a feeling we might be in for another defensive-oriented slugfest. That's going to be a great game to watch though, so I look forward to covering that game and the other Sweet 16 matches here on the channel in a few days time. Be sure to let me know though all your thoughts on today's action down in the comments below, and some of your predictions for UConn's next game against Indiana. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave it a like and subscribe, but with that being said, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.